be so professional. Okay, 10 o'clock, rock. Here we are, 10 o'clock. Woo, that's early. Yes. Uh, that's uh, Mar Marianne Sasaki. Uh, she's a, an attorney with the Clay Firm, and she's our host on uh, Life and the Law. And she's a Renaissance woman, may I say, may I say that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah welcome to the show, Mary. I like Marianne. a lot of stuff. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested in things. So he said, she said, that's our thing. Right. But today we're going to focus on one little area, not so little actually, and we've decided to call it aging, the next frontier. And I think he said, she said, is a perfect uh, way to express um, uh, aging because I think men and women experience aging very differently, frankly. And I tell you the truth, I think women experience aging uh, in a more pleasant way than men, and that's because they uh, have had had. Uh, they haven't had a, any period of their life where they were the king of the castle or the head of the firm or adored, you know, typically they haven't. And so there's no disappointment as they get older. It's kind of a steady, <laughs> you know well, what I'm that saying? Goes, that goes into the chapter thing, though. There's all, the whole thing about aging and mortality and how you deal with mortality and the decline of health. It's complicated, especially if, you know, people around you are living longer and, Maybe, just maybe, you can live longer, too, with little effort. Um, so what do you do in the years, those extra years that you, you found? I think you should just keep doing what you're doing. You know, I never really understood um, the concept of retiring. I just thought, well, if you, you're, you should be doing something you like every day. And if you're not doing something you like every day, you should find something to do you like every day. Well, sometimes but, that's hard financially, isn't it? I know, it? that's hard financially. That's, that's a pretty... Uh, Entitled thing to say. How isn't that terrible? Uh, that entitled <laughs> thing to say. Well, you know, entitlement only lasts so long. I mean, you can be entitled one day and not so entitled the next day. Well, that's day. true. Because <laughs> we were talking about homelessness, and you know, I mean, I, I I know lots of middle class and upper middle class people who are terrified that by the end of their lives, they, their resources are not going to last them, and they're going to end up homeless. So it's it's like a, it's a real it's a real issue. And and, 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 and an advanced age homeless means dead. Pretty much. I mean, you if know. you can't live on the street and you don't have adequate resources to um, get the health care you need, and yeah. you know, it's uh, you know, and you know where aging is a very big issue actually. Um, Aging's You're really hot on this stuff, aren't I you? I am, because I'm aging. <laughs> right as we speak, this very well, moment. Okay. I am hot on this stuff because, well, I came to Hawaii at not such a young age and started over, and um, it made me think a lot about how people were going to view me and uh, can you make big life changes at, at times that people are, are not making big life changes. And I think, yes, you can. You know, but you just have to think about it. I mean, people don't think about it. They just sort of, it happens to them. But I, what I was going to say w about aging in a certain community, it, in the LGBT community, it's a very interesting uh, dynamic with respect to aging because many people are living, have lived for 20 years or more with, with HIV, and they are often ostracized from their families. And um, there are few services for them. So there has to be now senior citizens' homes for, for um, LGBT, uh, you know, seniors, because we're coming and into HIV that. HIV seniors. Yeah, right. And we're coming into that. They're coming into that age group, that 60s and 70s. All the, all the people who protest in the 60s now, now need services need health services, for, yeah. you know, senior health services. Well, it can never be all that pretty, Marianne. I'm sorry. You know, you get older and um, first thing you realize is, God, where did, where did all those 50, 60 years go? I can't account for them. What happened? I have memories. Was that really me? Was that somebody else? I, I mean, is this fiction or fact or what? Well, you, you, memory the, isn't what, yeah, it's not, as, it's not as ironclad as we think it is. It's very, no, it's, it's very, not. It's very fa uh, fungible, you know, fungible or and, and then And then you get, you get to a certain age and you realize... You're declining. You're declining um, physically, and you're declining uh, mentally, and you're declining in terms of your influence on the people around you and the community, your your role in the community. But not and, you. No, no, Other no, people. not me. The present company <laughs> excluded from all of this. Um, and you and you know the thing is that um, 
uh, you know, in the old days, caveman days, you know, when you, when you feel, when you have this decline, you went off into the bushes and, and willed yourself to die, and you right. died. That was the community's way of getting rid of you, and that was your way of mm, making peace with it and going, going what's softly into the night. Um, but that's not what's expected these days. Uh, we're talking about additional chapters that are made possible. I think so. So you have this crisis of, you know, shall I continue to do my employment that I've been doing for whatever in my occupational thing? Or should I take advantage of the new way of thinking? Should I go into another, should I fashion another chapter? And some people say, you know, I have loved practicing law all my life. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to continue to do that. Right. Other people say, you know, it's been a charade. Uh, <laughs> I, I really would have preferred to do something else. Um, I've envied the people who do something else, so I'm going to do but something else. But they go else. and do it. They, and they go and do it, assuming, I, they, assuming they can, you know, and that's a big question, too. Um, so, you know, at the end of the day, there are very difficult decisions, and there are very difficult processes come down the pike. And it's, it's crisis in many ways for people who recognize, you know, those turning points. And, um, gee, I mean, I don't think it's easy dealing with decline, dealing with what do you do with your time, dealing with make is, making yourself relevant when maybe you're not so relevant as you used to be. Right. And dealing with mortality, which ain't easy. But I agree with all those points, right? But I, I think that women, it's like a little harder for women because it, you basically, well, maybe it's not harder. Maybe it's easier because women are older for longer. You know, after a certain age, women don't, don't even exist in the world anymore almost. Over, over like the age of 45 or 50, they disappear, you know? And I think that men sort of start to Not experience... everybody will agree with you on this. It's true. Okay. It's true. Uh, okay. It's, it, it, well, anyway, but men, it doesn't happen until a little later, maybe 60, 65. But you have to, you have to face those things of, uh, I think, yeah, n lack of power in society, right? That's the... That's that's the real kicker, I think. Isn't that the worst thing? I mean, all right, so it makes some pains. Uh, if, if have to have a role. Yeah. You know, life, we're social animals. Life isn't worth living unless you have a role of people who say, good for you, Mary, you're doing good things. Right. You really have to have that. Right. I mean, and, or with few exceptions. But what, you know, what I've been thinking about lately, and it all springs off a conversation I had a few days ago, it's about the way people see money, death and family. It's kind of a triangular affair when they get older. I would imagine. They, they, their metric is how much money, which is a bad metric, terrible metric. And we really should be more enlightened than that. Um, then secondly is family. Family gets more conscious and maybe more, especially when you die or you are about to die, and everybody looking over your shoulder for your will and your trust and right. all which that you should have and the benefits which as a, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. should have <laughs> early on in your life yeah 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 as you do other things you should take you know, care of your wills and what trust. people don't realize is that is that your relatives even your close relatives you know they change as you approach the it's end it's shocking what happens and, at and the end of life so it's, it's unbelievable. So Where's the love, man? Where's uh, the love? You, you know, know, it's so funny because you know, because uh, I, you know, I it packs a little in the area of, of trust and estates, and uh, and and we had a client, he, and uh, he died in intestate, and his three boys came in, and they were all on the same page, lovely boys, and um, boys, I say they were about seventeen to twenty-five, so. Um, we discussed what the next steps would be, what, it, that he was intestate and a personal representative would have to be appointed, et cetera. And, they, and we quoted them, like a, not a great figure, and they were like, wow, we thought it would be so much more expensive. So we said, yeah, you're not fighting. I said, when, when you're fighting, that's when it gets... That's fighting when is it, expensive fighting for is, everybody. Exactly, whether <laughs> it's a divorce or, or over a will or whatever, fighting is... is, is is not productive. It's it's not um, it's not inc it's inc income wasting, not or f money wasting, not money. And producing. yet, when you see when you see these families sort of converge around somebody they think has money, even if he doesn't. Oh yeah. Um, then 
you know, you see that you see this raw greed come out yeah. sometimes. It's really hard. I've seen this personally. Yeah. My, I've seen lawyers this in my have, family. Lawyers see this. I yeah, mean, well, that's you have to see it. That yeah. that's your practice. If yeah. you know, well, even typically part of your practice, you, and you know, it's like lawyers. We see maybe sometimes the worst part of humanity, really, when when all of those civilized veneers, you know, get stripped off. And now you say, how much is in it for me? I, I want, want that from you. money. I'm entitled. <laughs> I want that money. I, I own that money. <laughs> you, you have to leave me money. <laughs> right. I, I, you know, and, well, and, but you know, the thing is, the, 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 the person who's dying, too, does sometimes they do kind of silly things, whether they have dementia or whether they're just spiteful. Another problem. And they break up families. I mean, they... they they disparately uh, uh, distribute a assets, and and no one. There's always some person in the family who thinks that they did the most for mom, so they deserve a, like a lion's share. Sure, of the sure, happens all the time. And my my favorite one is when the our dear departed has left different amounts to different kids, on the basis that he perceives they need or he likes them this one better than that yeah. one or he hates this one better than that one. <clears throat> and then, you know, it's a recipe for complete uh, fragmentation of the family. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. you can wreck your family by how you divide things up for them. Absolutely. I know, I know many instances where that's occurred. And, uh, you know, I'm Italian, so I, I do in know an that. Italian family, <laughs> If Italian. You, Italians who get, they don't, they never forget. <laughs> Revenge <laughs> is a dish best served cold. So, you know, I've had relatives who've, who've done what you say and left different amounts of money to different kids and just, they never spoke again. The brothers and sisters never spoke right. again. Right. What a great sisters gift is that. Huh? I know. I know. And it's, it was really negligible money. It burns money. a hole in I, the family right away. Know, we're not talking millions of dollars here. We're talking but hundreds even, of thousands right, of dollars right. here. Right. You know. But that distinction, you know, is like you, you are branding that kid as better or worse than the other kid. You're creating a rivalry right. for the rest of their lives. And they hate it. And they hate you for but it, the, and they but, hate each other for but, it. You know, parent, the, the, the big dirty secret, though, is parents do have favorites. They always have favorites. Yeah. They, they hate to I admit hate to it, but they that, really but that, do. That's what happens. They yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but, I mean, it's, that's it's just the, the icing on the cake. parent who deals with this in a, in a, in a reasonable and right. loving way. But why do they have fa favorites? Like, why do parents have favorites? Because a, a child is more like themselves? They see themselves more in that child and they... But how the child a, treats them. Is, you think so? Yeah. Or how they resonate with the child, I guess. You know, but you find it all, you're right, you find it all the time. It's one of those truths. We're going we're gonna to find out more truths right after this break. Oh, I love truths. We're going to find out truths about how Hawaii deals with kupuna. Okay. We're going to find that out right after okay, this Okay, I need to know. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, which is on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. Have a great summit. Take care of your mental health. Hello, I'm Crystal from Quok Talk. I've got a new show here. You've got to tune in. Check out my topics on sensitive, provocative female issues. So Tuesday mornings, 10 o'clock. Don't miss it. It's going to be fun and dangerous. I pity the fool who ain't watching this show at 12 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Stan, the energy man, watch it. And Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman, welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! Oh, is that sure he bingo, 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 we're back. Now we're going to talk about how this stuff all unfolds in Hawaii. Nei. And the secret you know, to happiness. Yeah, well, <laughs> is there a secret? Is there happiness? So, uh, you know, now Marianne uh, Sasaki is telling us about how she moved here to what? To have a new chapter. Right. Have a new life. Right. But she moved here, you know, with the notion she would stay here, I assume. Uh, oh, absolutely. So you have to be facing the issue of what happens as you age in Hawaii. Nei. Uh, now, back when, I'll never forget this, my wife, then my, and my fiancé, I guess you could say, took me to her home 
in Kauai. You had a wife and a fiance at the same time? No. She, oh. she, no, it was. Oh, a, I thought you had it, some kind No, of it was a, it was a, yeah. Oh, no, it was a continuum. It was a continuum. About. I see, I see. She was first my fiance, okay. my wife. That's okay. Good. Yeah, I thought there was yeah, something yeah. I didn't know about. Yeah, how much time we got? <laughs> 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 All right, so she takes me to her home in, in Koloa, Kauai. She takes me to the Kapuna town, which at the time was below the highway in a little, a little you know, recessed area there. And, um, and all the Kapuna lived in these little old plantation houses, green with, uh, you know, corrugated roofs and all that. Little wee rooms, and they were all lined up along this, this, this recess under the highway, near the highway. <clears throat> and that's where they lived, and the community built the houses for them. Right, that doesn't sound And nobody, nobody said boo about it, it just they lived there, that's right. what happened. And their families would bring them food and take care of them. And, and they were, you know, in the lap of the community there in Kaloa. And I, I was impressed because it was so nice to see people taking care of the kupuna. And we had, we, Hawaii, had this great tradition of taking care of you the do. kupuna. You do. You well, definitely we had, do. We had. I think it's dramatically changed now. You know, circumstances have changed. Economics have changed. Uh, medical issues and technology. Well, technology. And medical care in general. Medical insurance, all that. It's all changed. And so now I don't think there's anybody living, you know, next to the highway. It was a small highway. I don't think there's anybody living in these kind of kupuna houses. Um, I think it's much more complicated and much more risky for them. And people, the, including their kids, are not going to spend as much time and attention helping them out. So they got to find other ways. And, the, and you and me, we have to find other ways. Right. And um, so, you know, Social Security is not really all that helpful. Um, only if you've worked a long, hard life, you right. know, and if you haven't, it's not going to be that much money. And right. query, is it going to be something you can count on going forward? Right. Um, and, you know, money goes so fast and there's a possibility of inflation. And there's the fact that Hawaii has an, an undersupply of not only affordable housing, but senior affordable housing. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and there's the risk that you could get to be, after a long, hard, middle-class working life, you could actually, in your old year, older years, get to be homeless. I think that that's, really, I don't think it's an unrealistic fear. Oh, it fear. happens all the time. You know, I mean, I, 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 I think that it's uh, one big illness or, I mean, if you're living a middle class life and uh, maybe your kids are on the mainland or something, and you, one big illness or some kind of, something, de some devastation of some kind, and all of a sudden you slip from the middle class life into poverty. And, you know, you just, how did I get here, you know? It, 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 and you all know. you feel is a sense of tragedy. Right. Is a sense that, gee, I, didn't, I don't deserve this kind of treatment. Right. And then you look well, at... homeless vets. Look at homeless vets, how many homeless vets there are. That's, and they've served the again, country. Again, very that's, tragic. I mean, it is tragic. They're not even, you know, uh, they're not even seniors. They're no. <laughs> juniors. No, right, right, right. So in, in other countries, you know, where things are more socialistic, in Europe, for example, um, there there are ways that the the government, the, the community, takes care of people in their in their I think old the age. families stay at home a lot longer, perhaps. Yeah. But the families stay at home long in Hawaii. Yeah. I mean, especially among Asian families, I I, I don't see that people don't get packed off and sent well, off. Well, I to, think there's still a know. certain cultural yeah. thing there, but I I think it's diminishing. Um, I think um, in Hawaii, it's very hard to find. A, uh, an assisted living facility that works for you. It, it might be too expensive. Uh, it might not be your, your community, your, your right. group of friends. Right. And friends are very important when you get older. Very important. You know. Although I want to make this point, because this is a very important point to me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite a bit older than my husband, so I assume that I will die before my husband. And he is not, and I repeat this, not free to remarry if I... <laughs> if I you know, everybody says, I want, really him, to, fancy I want him to be happy. I don't want him to be happy. I want him to be sad for the re every, every day after that. No, no. She's uh, Italian. <laughs> can you tell? No, I'm only kidding. I, mean, I always tell him that. Because everybody's always like, oh, you know, if I go, I want my husband to have a rich and fruitful life, or my wife to have a rich and fruitful life. Or, 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 or you know, even with um, end-of-life decisions, you know, people say, you know, if I'm a vegetable, you know, I, want, I don't want to burden my family. I want to burden my family. I'm like, I don't care what. If there's, like, a breath coming all out. All measures. Of me, take all measures. Every measure. <laughs> 
that's terrible. But these are questions that we face, you know. These are questions that we face. Well, and I, you know, I know one professional, and there are probably others, but I know one professional who deals with this. You know, when you're dying, this professional, she's trained in psychology, should come around and talk to you and talk to your family and try to make peace with things and, you know, keep you away from having dark thoughts and having all kinds of stress and strain about it. You know, teach you that, you know, death is part of life and you just have, a, have to have a good attitude about it. Right. And that's, that's a whole other show, a whole other time. Right. What, where I focus, though, is, you know, economically, is this community providing a, a soft landing for people who have spent their lives working middle class and whose, fa whose kids, they don't have kids or the kids have left right. or the kids are unable to help them and they have run out of money. Um, and, you know, is the government really doing the right thing here? Other countries, maybe other states too, provide more luxuriously for, for Kapuna. I'm not sure that we do. I don't, I don't think we there do. There are people out there working on the problem, but there's such, uh, the, there are union problems and permit and planning problems. I mean, there's such a, a miasma, a thicket of bureaucracy to get through. There, there are ways you can build affordable housing for 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 a, anybody who who needs it, but particularly you know for old people who need it. Uh, but to get through the to, to get through the bureaucracy to get to do it is just it's it's it's, it's a nightmare. I mean, I know somebody that's trying to um, build storage containers, you know, like these shipping storage containers, into gorgeous little houses. I mean, they're gorgeous. For but, homeless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how do you do it? Wh who's going to okay it? What permits do you need? Nobody knows. Nobody wants to make a commitment. I mean, it's a great idea. But you can't spend, you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, either the developer or, for that matter, the people who would live there investing in such a thing if you don't have whatever permits are necessary. Right, right, you're right. You can't go forward. You're not going to take the risk. But these are very inex they can be very inexpensively turned into very, very nice the housing that I would adore. You really have in. to fix this. You know, it's so perverse. And, that, and, you know, the problem with the political cycle and uh, actually uh, Colin Moore, our favorite political guy, um, you know, poli-sci professor at UH, came to speak at, um, you know, at the, um, at the Clean Energy Day program last week. And, and, and what he said, which is, I think is really important, is that, is that the, the people in government, political officials, they think in short term. They think for the election cycle, two mm -hmm. years, four years, mm -hmm. six years. They do not think in 50-year bites. And so the result is we have no long plans about this, and yeah. we don't do long plan things. But, but you know, taking care of the kupuna is a long plan Population thing. is aging. You know, it's aging rapidly, and it's, it's not a problem that's going to go away. So. Yeah. so, I mean, well, but people go away. I mean, people will go when, when the time comes. They will go to places that are more... Comfortable. For, you think so? They move, leave Hawaii, well, move to like Florida. Or short something? story. Short story. Okay. I had a client who um, was running out of money, and she did a lot of research, and she found it was a place in Pennsylvania, a really good place run by a retirement home company that was national, uh, with a good reputation. And this place, you know, pictures and charts and graphs and all this and contracts, really good. I reviewed it for her. I really liked it. I said. This is a good thing. You could do this. It's within your means. You know, you'll have a good time here. And she said, yes, but what about my friends? I would be leaving all my friends. I would be investing my remaining years in, in this place I don't know. Right. I can't do that. Right. So even though Hawaii is not nearly as friendly to Kupuna, Hawaii has friends for my friends. I, I'm connected. Yeah, as community. Yeah, yeah that, it absolutely does. So, I mean, Hawaii has, and she didn't go, by the way. She preferred to stay here, and even though, uh, you know, it costs more and it was more difficult for her. But <clears throat> I think we have half the problem, you know. I, I don't include weather in that. I guess I do. Weather is important. Weather is important. And friends are important, assuming you have, you've achieved some friends. Um, but the problem, we don't have housing, and we don't have programs that take care of the kapuna. And a lot of them wind up, really, on the street, terrible. Um, the government has got to get involved. And the proposition I, I told Zuri Bender when we started the show um, was, uh, don't worry, because the, the, the bell curve is going to put more people into that age. The age pressure group. will be there. The pressure will the be there will politically. Be there. 
And uh, these, these legislators who turn over to turn over every two years, uh, they're going to be under a lot of pressure, increasing pressure as time goes by, that the government should incentivize real affordable housing for homeless, yes, but also seniors. Right. And, and unless they do that, they're going to have people voting against them. Right. And somebody, hopefully soon, is going to make it a campaign issue. Uh, you know, uh, that's... This, I want to explore this more. I'm going to see if I can find somebody for life in the law, see what groups are doing what to um, increase uh, housing for seniors because it's, it's, at a critical, it's at a critical point. You know, baby boomers are aging. They're, um, they're this huge, you know, bulge in the, in the population. So I, I don't think it's, it's not an issue that's going away anytime soon, and I wonder what the brightest minds, the creative minds are thinking about doing about it. I, I'm, I'm going to look for it on Life in the Law in the next couple of months, Wednesdays 1 to 1.30. But I, yeah, I think that I'll make it a special, a special attempt to find some people yeah. who are doing some work. And as you drive around and you look at the homeless and, you know, feel sad about that, look to see the kapuna among them. Yes. And you'll feel sadder still because they don't have the options that the younger people have. Yeah. And think to yourself, there, but for the grace of God, go I. I do all the time. I do I all do. the time, too. I do all the time. It's a, you know, it's a thin membrane we walk in. It's on. a very, it is a very thin, it's, it's, like I said, it's one, it's one, you know, one cr emergency away for some people, one emergency, emergency situation, emergency medical problem or housing problem, and then whoop. But yeah. I, can I say one thing before we go? Are sure. we almost ready to go? Almost ready to go. Okay, but I want to say something. I want to congratulate you on the Mahalo Award <laughs> for OC16. I thought that that was so great. Yeah. It was, it was really a surprise. Was it really? We had no idea. I had no idea that it was, was going to happen. Walked in there and we see our own footage on the screen as a nominee. Said, My God, how did that happen? And then, you know, there were like half a dozen nominees, all of whom had really good shows. Right, right. And my goodness, we actually won the thing. OC 16, last Sunday night? Sunday night. Um, 10.30? Every Sunday, our premiere for a show. The one that's playing this week is the premiere of our coverage of the uh, Hawaii Clean Energy Day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, so we award-winning, award-winning coverage. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Always nice to spend the time. He said, she's, he said, <laughs> she said. She said, he said, yes. Thank you, Mary. <laughs>